In this video, I wanna talk about convection, uh, boundary condition for a fin. Uh, so in general, we've been talking about fins of uniform cross-sectional area, okay? So we derived a differential equation from an energy balance. Um, we solved this differential equation, and then now we're trying to plug in various boundary conditions to, to solve for what these constants are uh, and understand the temperature profile, heat transfer rate, and a fin. Um, we talked about an infinite fin, we talked about an adiabatic fin, and when an adiabatic fin can be assumed infinite. Um, and so now let's talk about this full scenario where maybe you've got, uh, this is probably the most realistic, you've got a fin and of course convection can happen everywhere, okay? So you, it's adiabatic if heat loss from the surface is negligible, but let's just say in the general case it's not, um, this is what we have. Uh, heat loss from the surface area and heat loss from the cross-sectional area at the tip at Z equals one. So. I'm not going to derive this uh, temperature profile. I've shown you how to do it twice, once for infinite, once for adiabatic. So you can do the exact same thing to derive this temperature profile. It's in the textbook. Uh, let's see if this goes right. Uh, Fundamentals of Heat and Mass Transfer, 8th edition. Um, Bergman and Levine. The It's, it's section 3.6.2. This is the heat transfer rate. You can look up the temperature profile. I don't think temperature profile on a fin is so critical. What we really care about, the whole purpose of fins, is what's the heat transfer rate out of a fin. Because usually you add a fin to increase heat transfer rate between a surface and a fluid. Um, so this is the heat transfer rate you can solve uh, following the same techniques we did before. And uh, now I've got this BO number, which is HL over K. Um, but of course, we're talking about the BO number subscript L, so it's relative to the length of the fin. So it's heat transfer in this direction, not talking about the conduction or convection in this direction, um, but in this direction, characterized by the length scale. So, um, yeah, this is our heat transfer rate. And let's compare convection at the fin tip, okay, which is what we're talking about here, in this expression, which you can derive. Or what we just talked about in the previous video is the adiabatic fin tip. In the adiabatic fin tip, there's no heat loss from the fin. And so the idea is if your BO number is much less than one, meaning uh, HL over K, okay? So meaning you have poor convection. We're talking about convection only at this tip uh, relative to conduction down the fin because you're talking about on this length scale L. It's not talking about on this length scale across, okay? So this would be length scale T. But if you're talking about the ratio of conduction to convection in this direction, if that's really small, then you've lost all your heat, you know, along the length of the fin. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so this term would go away. This term would go away. You're left with cinch over cosh. And look, you get the exact same expression for an adiabatic fin tip, okay? So this is just a more complicated version of what we already derived for an adiabatic fin tip. Um, and it's just saying that, um, yeah, your, your BO number is really small. So, so you've already, that just means that there's no convection at this, at this boundary. Now, um, you don't ever have to use this. Okay. So the reason that this, uh, uh you know, we don't go into a lot of detail with this is because there's, you can always use an adiabatic fin tip. And what you want to do is let's say you had two fins, uh, of equal area okay and one has an adiabatic fin tip and one doesn't okay what you can do is you can use the adiabatic fin solution okay so take your fin without an adiabatic fin tip and it's got this extra surface area for heat transfer right here what you do is you say oh let's put that extra surface area by making the fin a little bit longer okay but assuming it's adiabatic okay so let's transfer this surface area to the fin tip it's not perfect because there's going to be a little bit of a profile at the tip, but the profile changes fairly flat. So it's a good, a good approximation. Um, and so the idea is always use the adiabatic fin tip, but assume that the extra length, you're, you're going to use an extra length um, LC, which is corrected. So this is the corrected length um, accounts for the fact that you're using the adiabatic fin tip. And so for a rectangular uh, fin, the, the corrected area LC is going to be equal to the actual length L um, plus the thickness over two. So this is just a, a good approximation. 
Um, if you're talking about uh, pin fin, uh, your corrected length, oh, excuse me, your corrected length is going to equal the actual length L plus the uh, diameter divided by four. Okay, because of the geometry of a circle versus a, a, a wall, it's over four. But the idea is you're, this is a, a depending on this diameter determines how much surface area you're going to add. Okay, so um, that's why the diameter is bigger. You know, you, you also determine how much surface area is here. So, so these are the correction lengths you can use. So anytime you see a problem or if it doesn't say that's an adiabatic fin, you can just use an adiabatic fin with the corrected length. And then your, your math uh, equations are much easier than using the, the convection fin tip. Um, yeah, so, so that's the idea with a convection. And I kind of want to give you a summary now of what we've talked about in terms of the boundary conditions for a fin of, of uniform cross-sectional area. So if we have convection, this is a standard fin convection, heat loss from the fin tip. Of course, there's heat loss down the length of the fin, but also heat loss from the fin tip. Then what we do is we've basically got Newton's law of cooling where we've assumed the entire fin is at the TB, the base temperature. So we assume TB is T surface minus T infinity. And if that's the case, we've got a uh, HA fin, which corrects for the fact that the base is not at a uniform temperature. And then we've also got this correction factor to account for tip effects. So these are all the different losses and heat effects that happen at the tip of, of, a, of the fin. Now, if convection is not very good at this surface relative to conduction, then you can basically assume heat loss at this tip is negligible. So you have a very low BO number. Okay. So then we've got a much simpler expression. You actually have a temperature profile. Um, and uh, this tip effects simplifies to just hyperbolic tangent. Or this is the expression you would use um, if you had uh, tip effects, which are important. You can just use the corrected length and an adiabatic fin tip. Okay. Now, if you compute the value of M for your fin, if M equals 2.65, it means that your temperature drop is perfect across your fin. It basically goes from theta equals one to theta equals zero at the tip. And so that means that um, any longer would make no difference to heat transfer. So at, for M greater than 2.65, if you kept adding length to it, it's an infinite fin. So, so if M is greater than 2.65, hyperbolic tangent goes away, and now we've got a very simple exponential decay for the temperature profile, um, and it, it doesn't really matter. Now, um, the last one, so, so this is kind of a nice logic to see how we can go from complicated to simple, depending on the uh, parameters of your system. The last one, fixed temperature. Um, we're not really going to talk about this. It's not a very common one. Uh, you can use it, though. You can do problems with it. Um, I'm not going to talk about the derivation of it because we just did it uh, in depth for several other examples. So, you know, see this book, you know, Fundamentals of Heat and Mass Transfer, 8, Bergman, Levine, table 3.4. Um, anytime you use a book, it doesn't matter what the book is, if it's different editions of the book, especially compared to what I'm writing, uh, beware of theta m squared m capital M definitions, okay? So when I'm talking about theta, I'm talking about a dimensionless temperature. And for whatever reason, in this book, when they write theta, they say it's T minus T infinity. That's not dimensionless. That's just a relative temperature. That's just a delta T. So they do that uh, because of infinite fins or something. But anyway, a good engineer, we should use dimensionless numbers. So my theta is always uh, a dimensionless theta. Um, they also define M and capital M differently. I think you should go by what I'm writing, of course, but it doesn't matter. All the equations are the same. Just look at your footnotes, look at the description of the table, and you'll know exactly what they mean when they write a term like theta or m or whatever. Um, so that's it for uh, these solutions for these fins.